Welcome to our project, The Refrigeration Cycle. The team members are Amanda Baruth and Timmy Lin. The participating team members are Amanda Baruth and Timmy Lin. History of AC Systems The AC was first invented in 1902 by Willis Carrier. It became popular after World War II. AC was first installed in luxury cars in the 1930s. AC in automobiles. Today, nearly all cars have an AC system. The main components in the AC system consist of a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve, and an evaporator. The compressor. The compressor uses pistons to compress low pressure and temperature vapor into a high pressure and temperature vapor. We can assume the process is steady state, adiabatic, and has negligible potential energy. The energy balance on the compressor means that the energy in equals energy out under steady state conditions. The rate of work in plus the rate of internal energy in plus the rate of kinetic energy in equals the rate of internal energy out plus the rate of kinetic energy out. The entropy balance on the compressor is the entropy in plus the entropy out plus the entropy generated equals zero under steady state conditions. The rate of entropy change plus the rate of entropy generated equals zero. The condenser condenses high pressure and temperature vapor into high pressure and temperature liquid. The system we assume that it's under steady state and negligible kinetic and potential energy. The energy balance on refrigerant means that it's energy in equals energy out which means that it's the rate of the internal energy in equals the rate of the heat out plus the rate of the inter internal energy out. Energy balance on air. It means that it's the rate of heat in plus the rate of the internal energy in equals the rate of the internal energy out. Entropy balance on refrigerant and air. It means that it's the entropy in plus the entropy out plus the entropy generated equals zero, which also means that it's the rate of the internal the rate of entropy in of air and refrigerant minus the rate of the entropy out of air and refrigerant plus the rate of the entropy generated equals zero. The expansion valve. It turns high pressure and temperature liquid into low pressure and temperature saturated liquid. We assume that the process is steady state and has negligible potential energy. The energy balance on the expansion valve is energy in equals energy out. The rate of internal energy in plus the rate of kinetic energy in equals the rate of heat out plus the rate of internal energy out plus the rate of kinetic energy out. The entropy balance on the expansion valve is entropy in plus entropy out plus entropy generated equals zero. The rate of entropy in plus the rate of heat in divided by temperature minus the rate of entropy out plus the rate of heat out divided by temperature plus the rate of entropy generated equals zero. The evaporator. It turns low pressure and temperature saturated liquid into low pressure and temperature vapor. We assume that the process is in steady state, negligible kinetic and potential energy. Energy balance on a refrigerant means that it's energy in equals energy out, which means that it's the rate of heat in plus the rate of internal energy in equals the rate of the internal energy out. Energy balance on air. It means that it's the rate of internal energy in equals the rate of heat out plus the rate of the internal energy out. Entropy balance. It is the entropy in plus the entropy out 
plus the entropy generated equals zero. The rate of the entropy in of the refrigerant and air minus the rate of the entropy out of the refrigerant and air plus the rate of the entropy generated is equal to zero. This is how the AC system operates. The compressor on the car is driven by a serpentine belt powered by the engine. So the work that the engine produces goes to the compressor. When the AC is turned on, the clutch on the compressor engages and the refrigerant begins to pressurize. If the clutch does not engage, the refrigerant does not pressurize. High pressure and temperature vapor enters the condenser which is at the front of the car. Air flows through it while driving and an electric fan turns on if the refrigerant is not cold enough. The heat dissipates out of the, compress and out of the condenser into the surrounding medium. The refrigerant leaves the condenser as a high pressure and temperature liquid and goes to the expansion valve. The expansion valve throttles the refrigerant, drastically dropping the temperature. This is the part that actually makes the refrigerant cold. The expansion valve causes a phase change in the refrigerant, causing it to enter the evaporator as a low pressure and temperature saturated liquid. A fan inside the car blows over the cold refrigerant inside the evaporator, resulting in cold air flow through the car. The inside of the car is considered the refrigerated space, where heat is lost. Coefficient of performance. The efficiency of a refrigeration cycle is expressed in terms of coefficient of performance. To increase the efficiency, the net work in must be minimized and the heat loss must be maximized. Usually, the coefficient of performance of refrigerant ranges from 2 to 3. The coefficient of performance of refrigerant is equal to the heat loss divided by the net work in, where the net work in is equal to the heat gained minus the heat loss. Next, we'd like to demonstrate the operation of an AC system on a 2003 Chevrolet Suburban, and then we will compare the newer, more efficient technology of an AC compressor on a Volkswagen to the conventional style compressor on a Hyundai. Hi, okay, so today we'll be uh, demonstrating how an AC system works on a 2015 Audi Q5. Originally, we were going to be using a 2015 Suburban. However, we weren't able to get a good look at the components, so we decided to use this instead. So starting off, we have the compressor, which is this big old aluminum, th aluminum thing that down here, and that is driven off the serpentine belt, which runs off the crankshaft pulley, and so that would be your work in. And so once the compressor uses that power, it uh, compresses the refrigerant, and the refrigerant comes out of this line here, and this line goes into the condenser, which is actually behind here. And uh, you can't see the condenser because it's behind the radiator, but uh, it's back there. And uh, when the AC is actually on, these fans kick on so that it can dissipate some of the heat. So after the refrigerant gets condensed, uh, it comes out of the condenser as a high pressure and temperature liquid over into this line here. And this is where you measure the high pressure side of the AC system. And once it comes out of this line, it goes into way underneath in the dash uh, into the expansion valve, uh, which throttles the ref refrigerant into a low pressure temperature saturated liquid. And then it goes into the evaporator and the fan blows over the evaporator, which is actually what makes your car cold. And so once it comes out of the evaporator as a low pressure temperature vapor, the low pressures come out of this line and the low pressures can be measured at this port here. And so the low pressures and high pressures are actually really important for determining um, some problems with your AC system. Like if both sides, if both pressures are too low, maybe you're, you have a leak in the refrigerant somewhere. And if one side is too low, it could indicate a bad component. 
So once it comes out of the low uh, pressure side here, it goes back into the compressor and the cycle starts again. So here we are with the car running, and uh, as you can see, the belt is spinning the compressor down there, and so that's uh, compressing the refrigerant. And uh, like I said before, when the compressor kicks on, these fans start spinning to cool down the refrigerant that goes into the condenser. And so uh, this is all operating at normal temperature. The uh, air inside the car is really cold. Um, if I hooked up the gauges to these ports, this is the low side one. So the, uh, the low side uh, temperature coming out here is really cold. You can actually see some uh, condensation on here. That's how cold it is. And if you feel the high side one, which is over here, it's actually a little bit warm. Not not super warm, not like, you know, as warm as the exhaust is, but it's a little bit warm. And uh, so that's how you can tell everything is in uh, proper working condition. So this is the compressor on a 2002 Sonata. And so this is it all taken apart. And so this is just the casing right here. And then this is actually the meat of the compressor, right? So when you turn the AC on, this is the pulley, right? That has the belt on it. And so this is the clutch. The clutch engages. And then when the clutch engages, it starts turning this shaft here, which causes these pistons to move up and down like that in a circular motion. And then once that happens, it compresses the gas, which comes out, goes into these little, uh, little ports here, comes out of this uh, port here. And this goes to the condenser. And then when it goes through the whole cycle, it comes back through here after it comes through the uh, evaporator. And this is your low side. Okay, now this compressor is off a 2007 Golf. And similarly to the other compressor, it looks a little bit similar, but it's actually very different. Uh, this one, instead of just having an on-off uh, switch for the clutch with the compressor, this one has more of a variable state. So it's car called a variable displacement compressor. And this has been more popular on some of the newer Volkswagens because it helps with efficiency and stuff like that. So starting off here, like we had done on the other one, we have our pulley, and then we have the clutch that fits on here. But the clutch is actually always on. And so since the clutch is always on, take this plate off here, and uh, we have something called a swash plate right here. And this controls the variable distance that the pistons can travel. And so at its lowest setting, when the car is on its lowest setting of AC, or even when AC is off, the swash plate will spin like this, causing the pistons to have very minimal travel. So it'll travel maybe like this much and not compress the refrigerant very much at all. But at its highest setting, the swash plate can move all the way up here, causing the pistons to move very far. See how much that moves? And then it actually has seven pistons, but I only put it in one for this demonstration. And so it can move anywhere in between also, and so that's why it's called variable. And so all the compressed gases go into this chamber here. All the, uh, this is the high pressure chamber here, and then the outer one is the low pressure chamber. And so after it leaves the high pressure chamber, it goes into this port, which connects through here, goes out to the uh, high pressure line, which goes to the condenser, and then when it runs through the cycle, it comes back in, it goes back into the low pressure chamber here, compresses this valve a little bit, and then comes all the way back in here and goes right back into the piston. Okay, as far as comparing the two compressors, as you can see, the Volkswagen one is very complicated. Look how many parts come with this. It has three separate uh, chambers instead of two, like the Hyundai one does. Um, and uh, it also has a lot of these really uh, lightweight pistons. Uh, it has a lot more, it's, a, it's much more of a complex part. And so these tend to be a lot more expensive and be on uh, higher end vehicles like Volkswagens and Audis. This one on an older Hyundai is very uh, simple. It just has the casing. It only has one on and off setting. It's, there's not too much to it. There's this part, which is the most complex part, but there's not too much to be taken apart and to fail, which is why these ones tend to run a lot longer and these ones tend to fail after about 10 years. So it's a new technology that on newer Volkswagens and stuff, it's become a little bit better and more reliable, but on the older ones, it was still very experimental. And so, still more efficient on its lowest setting with the compressor on than the Hyundai one would be when the compressor is completely off. So, 
they were really trying to work in the efficiency factor when they ha when they put this on the car and trying to keep efficiency in mind, especially uh, with those little four cylinders. You want to be as uh, efficient as possible.